Welcome to another video from Between CAD Classes. Today we're doing another Autodesk Inventor part modeling tutorial. We're going to create the part that you see here on screen. Let's jump right in with selecting the correct template. This particular part is going to be a metric part. So I'm going to go to new and then double click on my standard millimeter.ipt. Before I jump into the modeling, let's take a look at the workflow that we're going to go through. For this particular part, I'm going to start by creating a rectangular base. Then I am going to add the back feature with the curve top. Next, I'll add the hole into that back feature. Then back to the horizontal base, I'll add in a hole. Then I will create a copy of that hole by mirroring it over. Then I will add in some chamfered corners on that bottom base. And then finally, I will create the raised extrusion. Since we're starting with the base, let's take a look at the detail drawing so we can figure out what the dimensions of that base are going to be. As we can see with the dimensions in the front view and the top view, this particular base is 200 millimeters wide by 128 millimeters deep, and it will be extruded to a thickness of 32 millimeters. So back in Inventor, I'm going to begin by creating a sketch on the horizontal plane, the XZ plane. When I sketch on this plane, it actually rotates my screen so everything is sideways. I'm going to click the arrow on the view cube here to straighten that out. Then I'm just going to arbitrarily draw a rectangle. I always like to draw relative to the origin, but in this particular case, I want the origin to be midway through the part so that way I can take advantage of this plane that runs through the middle. So I'm going to just draw a rectangle somewhere below the center point there. Then I am going to add a coincident constraint between the midpoint of this top line and the origin point here. That way this will stay centered around that point. Next I'll add in a couple of dimensions. So I'll add in that 200 millimeter width, then the 128 millimeter depth. So I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. Then I will extrude this shape. So we're coming up a thickness of 32 for this one. Next, I'm going to add the feature on the back of the part. So I'll rotate it around and sketch on that back surface. I'm going to project geometry to project this top edge so I can reuse it. Then I'm going to use the line command. I'm going to snap to one of the endpoints here. Then I'll draw an angled line. Then I'm going to click and drag off of the endpoint of this line to create a tangent arc. Then I'll go ahead and draw to the opposite corner. If I didn't already get my tangent constraint, I got pretty lucky there and, and was able to get that tangent constraint, I would go ahead and add that in myself. Next, I want to line this up so this center basically is above the midpoint here. I could do a vertical constraint, but really if I go ahead and put an equal constraint between the two sides here, that will pull it all into place. So let's take a look at our detail drawing. And we can see that the center of this arc shape is 108 millimeters above that base. And we can see that it has a radius of 76. Finally, from the side view, we can see that it's going to be extruded a thickness of 26. So back here in Inventor, I'll go ahead and add a dimension from the top of the base to the center of the arc. And I'll put that in at 108. And then I'll add in a dimension for the radius of 76 here. Now I could add the circular hole in here, but I'm going to do that as a separate feature to give me more flexibility. I'll go ahead and extrude the shape here. It's going the wrong direction, so I'll flip it the other way, give it the depth of 26, and click OK. Next I'll go ahead and add the hole in. So once again, checking the detail drawing, we can see that it has a diameter of 80 and it cuts all the way through that feature. So back in Inventor, I'm going to choose the hole command and I'm going to make a concentric hole by first clicking on the surface it's going to go on, then clicking the curved reference, in this case, the arc. Next, I'll go ahead and adjust my diameter here. So this is going to be a diameter of 80 and I'll make sure it's set to cut all the way through. Then click OK. Next, I'm going to add in one of the holes here on the base. So taking a look at the detail drawing, I can see that there are two of these holes with a diameter of 52. I can see that they come in 46 millimeters from each side. 
and I can see that they are 74 millimeters from the back of the part. Just to make it a little easier on me, I'm going to dimension them from the front of the part instead. So if we take that 128 minus the 74, that gives us 54 millimeters. So it will be 54 millimeters from the front of the part. So back in Inventor, I'll go ahead and start my whole command. I'll click on the surface where the hole is going to go. Then I will click my first reference. I'll change the diameter last. I'll click on the front edge here, and I just said that would be 54 millimeters from there. Don't press Enter. Instead, click the next reference. And this one was going to be 46 millimeters. Then I can go ahead and adjust my diameter and set that to 52. I will make sure it's cutting all the way through the part and I will click OK. Now I could certainly create that hole again, but I'd rather mirror this one. That way if the location or the size changes, the other one will update. Because I took that first original sketch of the base and centered it around the origin, that will give me an origin plane YZ running right through the middle of the part. So I can use this as my mirror plane. So I will select my mirror command from the pattern panel. I'll select the feature I want to mirror. Then I'll select my mirror plane arrow. Then I'll come in and select that YZ plane. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now we can see that feature has been mirrored. So once again, the big benefit is if I change this hole, this one is going to update. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add in the two chamfers. So let's take a look at the detail drawing again. And we can see that the chamfers are 38 millimeters in from each direction. Back in Inventor, I'll start the chamfer command. I'll pick those two vertical edges and then adjust my value to 38 millimeters. Then I'll click OK. Now I'm ready for my final extrusion. I'll go ahead and sketch on this top shape and I'm going to create a rectangle that is constrained to the front edge of the part and to the edge on the raised base. Now, as I take a look at that, it looks like it didn't quite grab it, so I'm going to go ahead and create a collinear constraint between the edge and the line that I drew there. So not a big deal that I didn't quite catch it the first time. Next, I'll dimension these. So taking a look at our detail drawing, the feature is 36 millimeters wide, and it is 44 millimeters away from the chamfered corner. Finally, in the front view, it is 10 millimeters tall. Back in Inventor then, I'll choose my dimension tool and dimension the width of this feature to be 36. Then I will dimension from one edge to the chamfered corner and I will set that one to 44. I'll go ahead and finish, then extrude. And once again, we're coming up 10 millimeters for this one. I'll select my home button to see my isometric view, and there I can see my final completed part. As always, this was just one possible workflow. You might look at the detailed drawing and see it a completely different way. Please like and subscribe as always, since I will be continuing to post more of these tutorials for your enjoyment. Thanks for watching.